One of the things I regret about limits to growth is that it does tend to portray growth and its limits in strictly physical terms. We say in the book that we did that to find the maximum boundary, recognizing that social limits may stop growth much earlier than we actually forecast. I would say that if we really looked at it, we would find we had already in most Western countries, and certainly in the less industrialized countries, passed the social limits to growth. That is to say that further growth only decreases social options. We need to find alternatives to material growth in solving difficult social problems. One of the responses to our book is that we can't stop growth while there are poor people. In fact, growth as it takes place today is opening the gap between the rich and the poor. In the United States over the last 10 years, the difference in income between the rich and the poor has increased. Certainly that's been the case between the rich countries and the poor countries. Growth, as it's proceeding today, is not solving the distribution problem. It's only making it worse. It's concentrating wealth. It's time to quit hiding behind the presumed power of growth in solving that difficult problem and recognize it for what it is, a difficult ethical issue, one which can't be solved to everyone's satisfaction, but which must be solved better than it is today and in ways other than by sustaining growth. We have to find other ways for people to feel some progress than through the accumulation of material goods. 